It all begins with an idea and with a really good question. So at the beginning of this workshop, we were presented with a framework to implement computational thinking in, our, in the core curriculum. And that's an idea that I am fully behind. My district has already implemented something called engineer design process as a framework for our lesson planning. Okay, so we were given some excellent resources and some experience with coding, collaborating, connecting, and creating throughout the week. We one of the one of my takeaways from the program was the way we were instructed in our coding sessions to work with where did it go? Pair pair programming. And pair programming is sort of like turn and talk, but a much more effective version. Basically, you have two students partnered together, one Chromebook with the coding environment loading, Snap in this case, and the other Chromebook loaded with the instructional PowerPoint. So one student is the driver who is building the code, and the second student functions as the navigator. Neither of those roles can cross. And this is a couple students doing a very good job walking us through that idea. That's a takeaway that I will bring to the classroom, whether we're doing computational thinking or not. I really like the power and the accountability of that model of partner work. OK, so. With the engineer design process, our goal is always to fail fast. So I have, frankly, no problem thinking big and thinking too big. My first idea with code, I will walk you over to a new tab and show you Here we go. I'm sorry show you my walk, a very quick film of the walk show, walkthrough of my first idea of the thesis statement code that I wanted to bring into my classroom. Too many moving parts, too large, and it failed fast. The code I received from my high school helpers was incomprehensible to me, which meant that I would not be able to deploy it in my classroom as a tool for teaching computational thinking or an effective tool for building thesis statement construction skills. So I'll, I'll let this run through my basic ideas. Essentially, I wanted my students to, depending on the level with thesis statement they're at, um, be able to program and utilize one of three types of thesis statement formulas. One, a simple closed thesis statement, one a here we go we'll scroll up oh this stopped i don't know why that stopped but this goes on and on here we go okay i think i will Sorry, I was running an extension and it crashed on that. Data summary of that document, we don't want that. Okay, well again, I'm the kind of teacher who doesn't mind jumping into things. I thought this was cool because it could show you the whole idea as it sort of flowed from my brain to the paper. Uh, the idea was too complex. I'll go back to my presentation. Um, the code I received was, again, unusable, and I left Tuesday's session thinking, what am I thinking, and really kind of crashing and burning. However, as you know, as an educator, failing is the first step of learning. So I went back to my ask. I decided to simplify the thesis statement code, and on Wednesday, I contacted my high school helpers again and shared with them a much simpler napkin sketch of a simpler thesis statement formula 
that would provide a simpler code that I felt I would be able to understand and deploy in the two ways that I want to deploy it. The first way is to, again, teach basic computational thinking in the classroom. And the second content area objective is to have the kids actually use the program, the thesis statement algorithm to learn how to construct, decompose, and then construct a thesis statement. And ultimately to evaluate their reasoning that they are putting together to support their arguable claims. Okay, um, this is a picture of the final code. I embedded some comments which break down that process into the two steps. These first three boxes allow the student, prompt the student to get into the code and improve the code change costumes on the sprite, all of the things that we did in training here at our computational thinking workshop. Uh, change the background, debug, use Parsons codes, et cetera, et cetera, just to familiarize them with the coding environment. And here at the bottom, you'll also find in the script extension activities for your students who are ready to move on to counter argument thesis statements and open-ended thesis statements. And for those extension activities, I thought it would be a fine thing to have my students actually use what they learned through interacting with this code and this basic algorithm and extend their thinking both in computational thinking and in content area thinking, have them build their own programs to decompose those other two more advanced types of thesis statements, counter-argument thesis statements and open-ended thesis statements. Okay, here is a close-up of that coding space. And then I thought I would close this screencastify with a, an action shot of the code. So I'm going to open my browser where I have that snap code open. It will take just a moment to load, and I am going to run the code. So this first part is a greeting where the student inputs their name, the algorithm interacts, the student then enters their claim. I'm going to keep it really simple, just like every time I teach thesis statements in the classroom, I start with something ridiculously simple Dogs are better than cats. Clearly, some people may argue that point. That's what we are looking for. The first reason is dogs are protective. Notice that I'm keeping this a general overview in my reasoning. Um, you will need to prompt your students not to be too specific at this stage in their thesis statement construction. Second reason is dogs are fun. You can take them to the beach, you can take them to the park, they can come in the car with you. Okay, and the final reason is dogs are more interested in, are interested in people. Dogs are part of the pack is how I'm going to say that. Again, I, my students run from inclusion students to um, AP students. So this, I feel, is an effective tool for all of them with scaffolding. So the algorithm thinks for a few moments and then spits out a string of text that essentially can be converted to a thesis statement. Now, notice the time on that is set to show that thesis statement for 15 seconds. I am going to jump in right now and change that code to something like 200 seconds. Don't forget always to prompt your students to save their code. Okay, so you have seen the code, you have seen me, how simple it is to adjust the code, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation and consider 
deploying this in your classroom. The last thing I wanted to note, I wanted to end this on is I'm going to write my email address. I would encourage you all to reach out if you're interested in launching this. I'm happy to Skype you through it or um, do a Google Hangout where I can help you actually deploy it in your classroom. Please do reach out. This is my work email address, and I'm going to make it really big so you can read it. All right. I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you so much for your time. Ciao.